thing truckers are interested in is how fast their trucks will go and how far their CBs will reach. Well, hello, big riggers. Thanks for joining me, Jim Campbell, as we talk all things trucking. In this video, we'll discuss cargo theft, which is nothing new, but it is something that's been steadily on the rise since the COVID situation. Uh, before we get into it, please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, ring that notification bell at the bottom. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, cargo theft is generally committed by an organized gang. Now, I'm not talking about Dominic Toretto's crew from Fast Five. I'm talking about real-life cargo theft gangs that are pretty damn clever in their own right as well. Last year, there was 870 cargo thefts reported in the United States with an average value of $166,854 lost and a grand total of $145 million lost in cargo theft. The FBI defines cargo theft as the criminal taking of any cargo, including but not limited to, goods, chattels, money, or baggage that constitutes in whole or in part a commercial shipment of freight moving in commerce from any pipeline system, railroad car, motor truck, or other vehicle, or from any tank or storage facility, station house, platform, or depot, or from any vessel or wharf, or from any aircraft, air terminal, airport, aircraft terminal, or air navigation facility, or from any intermodal container, intermodal chassis, trailer, container, freight station, warehouse, freight distribution facility, or freight consolidation facility. Whew. Ten and one, a lawyer had to write that. That was a hell of, hell of a definition, but it covers everything you can think of in the transportation industry. You know, so therefore it could be considered cargo theft if, you, if it's tampered with. Some of the most common ways that these gangs, and that's what they are, they're retail crime gangs, some of the ways that they perpetrate their trade is you have leakage, what's called leakage operations. That's where the thief takes part of the shipment, but not the entire truckload. Often that happens on the dock. Usually there's a scheme between one or two forklift drivers or, or somebody in shipping and a forklift driver, whatever, but they short load trucks. You know, instead of getting 20, 21 pounds, they give them 20. Instead of getting 22, they get 21. Or they, you know, only give them half a skid instead of a whole skid. But uh, some along that line where they short ship it, you know, then the, the driver delivers it, it comes up short of pallet, and then, the, and then there's argument between was it the shipper or was it the receiver. You know, finally it's written off somewhere along the line. Meanwhile, the theft, the, per, the, the thief that perpetrated it, he gets to pocket that. Um, next way is fictitious pickup. Usually is when well, you got a fake broker or a fake trucking company, you know, working cahoots where, you know, somebody calls up a trucking company or calls up a broker and and says, I'm so-and-so, which they're really not. And they swap paperwork, which is really bullshit paperwork. And they basically steal a load. They, they make the broker, make the shipper, make the truck driver, whoever they're trying to fool in this equation here, make them believe they're somebody they're not. Then what happens is the fake driver goes into the shipper now that he has the information on, you know, on hand, the product, pickup number, destination, all that good stuff. And the fake driver picks it up, drives it out, you know, and uh, easy rip off. They ripped, the, ripped them off straight from the race, straight from the shipper. That happens all the time. Another way they do it is just hijack the, the, the load altogether. The criminals will take the whole truck. A lot of your drivers don't. They should, but they don't. A lot of your drivers or drivers should carry two sets of keys. One that if you're going to keep an ignition to keep the truck running, you know, because you're just running in from the fuel island into the, you know, facility or whatever the case is. So the, the whole idea is so you won't leave an unlocked truck. And there's going to be times where it's roasting outside or it's a dead of winter and you're not going to want to shut that truck off where you go to truck stop. So you might want to let it idle. You have to keep it nice and warm, toasty for when you get back. In order to do that in a safe way, you want to, you know, have two keys. But that, that's how it happens a lot, that you have them sitting around truck stops, sitting around shippers, sitting around receivers, whatever. Watch like a hawk. 
for drivers to walk away from their equipment. You know, and if it's left unattended and the door's open and the engine's running, that truck's gone. That happens a lot. So you got to be careful with that. Another way you have hijackings. In another video, I detailed about a scam that they were running up in Boston quite a few years back. But uh, they had, there, there's various points where you could pick up and deliver up in Boston. And uh, the scam they were running up there is drivers would roll in there at 10, 11, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, whatever, and end up getting lost or, or didn't know exactly where that shipper was or that receiver was. So they get on the radio Hey, anybody out there, you know where such and such a place is? Somebody will come back. Oh, yeah. You know, do this, do that. Make this right. Make that left. And you're there, man. No biggie. Okay, thank you. So the driver does you know, what he was told, right, left, whatever. And before he knows it, he's, he's, he, you know, he's, he's staring at a low underpass he can't get under. Or he's at a T in the road where he can't make the right, can't make the left. He's stuck. And if somebody comes out running from the sides, disconnect the airlines, then they rob him. You know, they either beat the shit out of him and rob the trailer, or they hijack the whole damn load. Uh, another way they do it is just like you see in TV. It happens for real, where somebody acts like they're broken down, you know, or or, or, or whatever the case is. You know, you we've all seen it, or, or look like faking like there was an accident or something, just to get the driver to stop stop his rig, and then they take it over that way. They hijack it, but you got to be very, 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 very careful out there. I remember one time in particular, um, I was I was tired, dog tired. I pulled over into a pickle park. It was a good sized pickle park. Kicked the shoes off, you know, climbed back in the bunk, get me some sleep. I was just starting to get into La La Land and somebody knocking on my door. So I climbed back in the driver's seat, looked out, and here's a guy standing there. He goes, Hey man, was that you to call me? I said, no. Called you about what? Oh, about a flat tire. See, you got a flat tire back there. That's why I figured it must have been you. I said, no, it wasn't me. He goes, well, I'll show you where it's at. You want me to show it to you? I said, no, I'm good. You go ahead, man. I'm I'm, I'm good. You go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out later. I watched me in the mirror. I'm slowly getting my wits about me because I'm, now I'm waking up. I'm watching him walk back. I light up a cigarette. I'm thinking, I bet that guy was going to try to hit me upside the head. Let me get out of the truck, hit me upside the head, and rob me is what he was up to. I finished my cigarette, got dressed, put my boots on grabbed my little uh, Louisville Slugger and walk, walked down and checked it. I didn't have no flat tire. You know, I was right. It was just him trying to get me out of my truck to probably, you know, hit me upside the head. But you got to be careful out there. Always have a worry eye, you know, of, of, you know, what people might try to do to you or scam you. Or and you always got to be paying attention. You can never let your guard down because you just don't know. Now, a lot of times... You got employees in on it, usually at the the shipper, you know, where the, you know, the forklift driver, like we talked about, forklift drivers work when somebody in shipping, you know, or another way, the uh, guards who has ac- have access to the, the paperwork, say so no where the loads are headed. So if the guard is dirty, you know, and he's got, he's working with the gang, he gives them the shipping schedule of where these loads are going to, what time they're picking up, who's picking them up, you know, what company. That that, that gang, all they do is sit out there and, and wait for that particular truck with that particular product that they want on that truck and follow it as it comes out of the gate. If the driver pulls off somewhere, if, if they can get him down the road and hijack him, they'll do it that way, whatever. But that's how they know what loads are going to. But a lot of times at the shipper, it's the guards, the forklift drivers, the people in shipping. You know, not saying they're all working together, but there's been scams where it's happened in the past. But you always got to keep a wary eye. Keep your head on a swivel. Cargo theft is definitely, definitely hard to fight and nearly impossible to stomp out. But uh, the only thing you can do is try to deter it the best you can, you know, by having those Heavy padlocks on the back. Now, I know that, you know, somebody can come up, snip, snip, whatever, but having that lock on her, he's gonna, at least it's going to deter. So it's not going to stop out everybody trying to get in your trailer, but it'll cut out a certain segment. And that's what we're trying to do, deter some of the theft. Make sure you have a, a nice thick lock on the back of that trailer, a kingpin lock, so somebody just can't, you know, back that fifth wheel underneath of it and take that trailer, you know, with them. Uh, or, or something, e- even a glad hand lock, so they can't lock onto it, you know. And try to park in a, a well-lit, safe, secure area 
that's well lit. Thieves are like cockroaches. You flick that light on and they scatter. But always try to park in a safe, safe place. Something you should do. Whenever you're in a truck stop or wherever you happen to be at, if you can back that trailer where it's all the way against the fence, you know, so that, you know, somebody can't open the doors up because you got to back too far against that fence. Or a lot of times poles, light poles will be up. And you can back that trailer, right, you know, so so the middle of it where that pole is, and they can't pop, they can't open those doors, you know. But whenever you can do that, that's just one more one more nice deterrent to have. Lately, the uh, city of brotherly love hasn't been so much brotherly love lately. Home to Rocky Balboa. It's been a hotbed of cargo theft activity. Check this out. Police say these guys have it down to a science. Essentially, they're looking out to where these truckers usually park. Then they look inside the cab and make sure that the driver is sleeping. Happening usually in the early morning hours. They break in and steal as much as possible before getting away. Police say overnight a trucker was sleeping in his cab along Charter Road in Northeast Philadelphia when he felt a shake. Thieves were rifling through the trailer. They had taken 56 cases of pork products. It's not the first time we've covered meat thefts. In the area, it's a common place for truckers to park overnight, to get some rest, and head to warehouses in the morning. The only problem is the thieves know that. Jesus Lopez is a local trucker. He says these incidents have the industry on alert. This is scary for you know for any any driver there, local or, or or over the road. You know it's it's not safe anymore. The drivers are almost always sleeping when they're targeted. They're asleep in a lot of cases. The refrigerator trucks make a lot of noise. This latest cargo theft marks at least 37 reported in Philadelphia this year. These products are valuable. It's around twelve thousand dollars worth of pork products. It's believed a number of thieves working together robbed the truck last night with more than one getaway vehicle. There must be a market for the stolen meat, and it has to move fast. Or you got to store it. Yeah, yeah, you got to put it in a refrigerated place. Yeah, you won't get spoiled. But the big story on Action News tonight is new details in an unusual and very heavy heist in Northeast Philadelphia. Detectives now believe the thieves got away with twice as much as they originally thought, some 10,000 pounds worth of the coins. Action News reporter Maggie Kent live now at the Walmart parking lot where this all played out. Maggie, that adds up to quite a bit of money. Brian, the scope of this is just incredible when you think about it. Investigators think that this thief or thieves may have gotten up to $200,000 worth of dimes. That's 2 million coins. Thousands of dimes scattered and shimmering in a parking lot of Philadelphia Mills Mall. They spilled out of a park trailer when thieves broke in. They were trying to cross cross load the dimes into other things to carry it away. There's dimes all over the parking lot. The cargo, $750,000 worth of dimes, was loaded up at the Philadelphia Mint yesterday. Police say the truck driver parked here overnight, went home and got some sleep before a long day of driving to Florida. But when he returned in the morning, he found someone had broken into the trailer using bolt cutters and stolen hundreds of thousands of dimes. It's normal in the trucking industry, like they would pick up a load. There's rules about how much you can drive, etc. So they have to get their required sleep. Trucker Damian Luger says typically a driver stays with the cargo overnight. If it has a sleeper, yeah, bed in the back, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to stay with the trailer, so. I'm not sure why, why, why he left it like that. Police say the cargo thefts have been an ongoing issue, both here in the Northeast and in South Philadelphia, with all kinds of goods stolen. We've had lamb, chicken, TVs, refrigerators, etc. taken, alcohol. Now police are collecting the dropped dimes and surveillance video to try and find the culprits. Ryan, we've reported on these cargo big... thefts before. Just a couple of months ago, we told you that $20,000 worth of meat was stolen from a truck parked in Northeast Philadelphia. And early this morning in that same area, another tractor trailer was targeted. Empty alcohol boxes on the ground in Northeast Philadelphia next to a tractor trailer that was looted overnight. Police say the thieves got away with bourbon and seafood. Uh, the driver was wakened by the truck shaking. Um, he saw two vehicles, a white vehicle and a black vehicle. 
make off in the back of his trailer. The trailer was open. It happened around 2.30 this morning on Caroline Road. When police got on scene, one of the suspects tried to drive away, hitting a police cruiser in the process. Their data shows the most popular items that are stolen fall under the food and beverage category. But he says thieves target anything and everything. If you look at what's being stolen, it's what the consumer is demanding. The consumer is demanding uh, video games, headsets, uh, energy drinks, solar panels. The 6 ABC data journalism team found cargo thefts have steadily increased in Philadelphia since 2020. Cargo Nets data shows Pennsylvania is ranked in the top eight for states with the highest theft activity. The state's Motor Truck Association says drivers need to have situational awareness. Make sure you park in a safe location. Make sure you have locks on your trailer. They say they do not believe this is the first time this group has committed this kind of theft. Now I wonder, I wonder if that driver that loaded up over the Philadelphia Mint and then took that tractor and trailer and parked it in Walmart's parking lot and then went home for the night and got ripped off. I wonder if he still got a job today. I don't know. Got to use your noggin. You know, I, I, I'd, I'd lay a dollar to a donut that they had a rolling place. This is a Philadelphia Mint we're talking about. That you had to drive at least the first 100, 200 miles or whatever with that load before you could stop. You don't think you don't think thieves gangs are going to like watch what trucks come out of there and follow them. That was stupid. That was stupid. All right, my friends, please remember like subscribe and ring the notification bell. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Bye. I can't hardly wait till I'm a trucker.